Welcome back to the sixth part in our income generation. The most crucial part of all, closing the sale. So let's go back to our income chain to see where we've come from and where we still need to go. We started at the beginning where we identified our prospects and we prospected them. Then we did our listing appointments, we did our price and marketing presentations, we closed our mandate, we performed our marketing activities, and we generated our buyers and tenants. Now comes the crucial part. Now we need to close the deal in order to secure our future income. So let's look at how we need to do it. I always say, negotiation is a game of psychology. The strongest opponent is the one that's going to win. Almost like a chess game. Each person has their pieces or their pawns on that chessboard. What we need to do is anticipate our opponent's next move. Because if we do that, we will ensure that we achieve success. So be the master of your own mind and your emotions. So where do we start? We start with what I call a preparation checklist. Knowing the right moves is going to be vital for your success. So what does this preparation checklist mean to us? Clarify what your objectives are. Then, clarify what the client's objectives are. What are they wanting to get out of it? What is the ultimate goal for you? And what is the ultimate goal for them? Look at the strengths and weaknesses of your strategy. Because remember, we need to focus more on our strengths than our weaknesses. Decide for yourself what is negotiable. The most important part being your commission. What is it that you feel you have earned on that transaction? Remember, ask questions and listen. Very important part of that whole negotiation strategy. And if needs be, remove yourself or walk away, which for an agent is probably the hardest part of the job. So, when we are meeting with our seller or our landlord. Review your efforts. Remember, as an agent, we are being paid for the marketing activities that we have performed in order to achieve this successful result. Go over them. Reiterate all the marketing activities that you've done in order to be sitting in front of him. Review any minor contingencies of the offer. Maybe the buyer or the tenant has not met all of the specific requirements that the seller or the landlord required. Review the completed offer. Highlight the strengths of the offer rather than concentrating on the weaknesses. Deal with any objections, most importantly. Ask the seller or the landlord to accept the offer. If we don't ask, we don't get. Explain to your seller or your landlord that this is a good offer and explain the consequences to him if he does not accept that offer. If he still has an objection, then go and suggest a counter offer. But ultimately, we want them to accept the offer as it stands. If in this instance there is a counter offer, then make an appointment to go and sit in front of your buyer or your tenant to present the counter offer. Always face the client where possible. It's much easier to say no when you are not sitting face to face in front of somebody. Remember, the whole purpose of this appointment is to get the offer accepted by your seller or your landlord. So make sure that you have done your preparation checklist, you know your next move on that chessboard, because that's going to ensure that you achieve success. I look forward to seeing you at the last part of our income generation series. Thank you.